Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art within redstone. I'm your host, Am Le Du, and this is going to be a continuation of my item elevator video. In that video, we went over all of the different item elevators that I could think of, how to build them, and how to build different clocks that have different speeds so that you could find a design no matter what you were trying to do. But it has been brought to my attention that I overlooked something. Fight Bacon was looking for a lossless dropper elevator, ones that don't leave any items behind in the elevator. He also brought to my attention that you can use observers to make lossless elevators. Now I can't believe I didn't even think about this because that's how most multi-item sorters move items around since their elevators need to be more precise. So I came up with a couple of designs for lossless elevators, one of them that uses observers and the other one that does not. And we'll be doing a build-along tutorial near the end of the video. But first, let me address the problem that he had with the Piston Observer Clock. In our Dropper Elevator video, we went over three different clocks that have three different speeds, and for the designs that I have for you today, we're going to be using this middle clock that is the slowest of the three. That is mainly because the fast clocks are more for if you have multiple inputs going into your dropper elevator. So like if you have a whole line of hoppers going into different droppers, or if you have more than one dropper going into the base one, that's kind of what the faster clocks are for. You know, if you use the faster clocks on single input, it just doesn't work out right and it doesn't make it any faster. It kind of freaks out. You know, so this basic clock right here is all you need for a single hopper input. And just to demonstrate this, if we use this middle speed piston observer clock and we only put items into a single hopper to be loaded in, it's going to freak out. <laughs> you know, it's going to just move back and forth, moving items occasionally. You know, and this is not ideal. It's extra noisy, it's extra laggy, you know, and it's going to give you a block of gold occasionally. <laughs> you know, but if you load items directly into the hopper, you know, then it can keep up because the clock never turns off. You know, or if you load items that are going into multiple hoppers that are all going into the same dropper, it can also keep up where it doesn't, you know, freak out. Whereas if you just use the slow clock, the items would start backing up in the bottom dropper because it can't unload them fast enough. And this is the same with the fastest clock, the comparator clock. You know, so really again, the fastest clocks are for if you're loading items directly into the dropper, or if you're loading items using multiple hoppers going into the same dropper. But for your standard single hopper inputs, the slow clock that uses a repeater and a comparator is perfectly fine. Items will not back up into the dropper, and the clock will keep up without freaking out. But now to address the main issue that Bite Bacon had, as well as the main point of this video, is that these original designs are not lossless, meaning that some items will get stuck in the dropper until the next time the dropper is activated. Now they won't be stuck in there forever, nor will they build up, because every time you activate it, it will kick the items that got stuck through the system first. So these designs will totally work for most situations. However, if you do need or want it to be completely lossless where no items ever get stuck, that is what we will be going over right now. Starting with this first design that uses an extender to extend the clock so that it guarantees that it pushes all of the items through. And again, I will have a build along at the end of the video, but for now let's kind of go over how it works. So we separated out the clock so it's no longer attached to the input. The input is just simply by itself with a comparator and a repeater, and then we added an extender coming off of that that then connects over to the clock. So now, rather than the clock turning off as soon as there are no items in the bottom dropper, the extender will keep the clock on long enough for it to kick the item all the way out of the system. You know, so if you put one item in, you'll get one item out, or if you put in 10 items, you will get 10 items out. So this is a super cheap alternative to using observers. It's a little bulkier at the bottom with the redstone, but it's less bulky going up because you don't have lines of observers. It's also not quite as precise as using observers, so it will make more noise, and there is another limitation. That is, if you make the dropper elevator really, really tall, the items won't quite reach the top from just a single extender. You know, so for like this example, if we throw one item in, it will make it all the way to the top. However, if we throw 10 items in, some of them will get stuck in the topmost droppers. So if you want this to be really, really tall, there is actually an easy way to fix this still without using observers. All we have to do is extend the duration of the extender. 
And of course, depending on how tall you make this, like if you made it from bedrock to build limit, you would need a much longer extender than if you just used 15 droppers, for example. You know, so we're just going to expand this comparator extender as much as we need to, you know, by adding comparators in the middle and then replacing the block and dust at the end. Every time you add two comparators, it will extend the extender's duration. You know, and so then just test it to make sure that it is extending the signal long enough for the items to come out of the system. It should keep clicking even after all of the items have been dispensed. And that's it! You can infinitely expand this comparator extender just by adding comparators, or you could switch it out with a different sort of extender, you know, with a timer or something like that, if you need it to extend for a really long time. Now as for the hopper, it basically needs to be on this back side here. You know, it can't be where the comparator is, it can't be where the torch is, and this dust will actually lock the hopper on occasion, so you can't really put the hopper on this side unless you redirect the dust. You know, you could always switch out this block for a target block, and that would successfully redirect the dust away from the hopper. So if you want the hopper to be on this side, you can always use a target block to redirect the dust. But that's it for this design, so now let's move on to the one that uses observers. Again, you can check the timestamps if you want to just skip ahead to the build-along tutorial, or if you want to take screenshots and just build it from a picture, that would probably work as well. You know, but this one uses a ton of observers, but it's much more precise. Basically, you can make it silent, where only the dropper that has the item in it will activate, so you won't have any extra clicking. But mine currently does have extra clicking because I have it set to double speed. Now the reason I have it set to double speed is that if for some reason an item does get stuck, you know, this design being super precise, it'll basically be stuck in there forever because it never activates the droppers extra times. You know, so if you want it to be silent, you can have the repeater have a no delay or a one tick delay where you don't poke it at all. But if you set it to a two tick delay, like you see here, it will be at double speed. So if you, you know, manually load items into the bottom dropper, or if you have multiple inputs, this will not only unload those items faster, but also if you get an item stuck for some reason, like if you unloaded this while it was moving items at the precise moment, you know, and some weird stuff happened or some lag, and an item does get stuck, you know, if you have it at double speed, th those items will kick through because the droppers are pinging extra times. You know, so it trades noise for stability, in a way, if you make it less precise by making it at double speed. But really it's up to you, because the silent version should always be stable as well. You know, even if you unloaded the chunk while it was moving items through there, even with a bunch of lag, the game should still save the redstone observer data at the same time that it's saving the dropper data. So it should kick that item through the next time that you load the area. You know, just you know, with lag in Minecraft, there's always a chance of some weird nonsense happening. You know, plus I like double speed stuff and don't mind the droppers clicking while it's active. You know, but no matter what kind of design you want to build, if you want a super fast clock or a different variation of dropper elevator, you can check out my other video. You know, but if you want the super precise designs that we went over today, we're going to start building them right now. So for the elevator that uses an extender to guarantee the items never get stuck, you are going to need a build area like so. Basically a 3 by 8 area, depending on how tall your droppers are going to be. But your hopper is going to be on this back side of the bottom dropper like so. Then we're going to place a comparator coming off of the dropper, so face away from the dropper when you place that comparator. And then that comparator is going into a repeater with no delay or with a one tick delay. You know, you just don't poke it. Then place a redstone dust and then another comparator facing away. And then we're going to turn around and place a comparator the opposite direction of the one that we just placed. Then we're going to place a solid block of any kind coming out of that comparator, and then three pieces of redstone dust. One behind this comparator, one in front of this comparator, and then one next to that. Then we're going to place another comparator facing that direction next to the first comparator that we placed, going into a solid block. Then we're going to place a repeater next to that solid block going toward the other comparator, then we're going to place dust in these positions, except for this corner right here actually needs to be a solid block, just to help the extender whenever it reaches a signal strength of 1. Now all that's left is to place our torches and blocks going up the sides of the dropper. So on top of this block right here, next to the comparator and repeater, we're going to place a redstone torch. Then we're going to go up with blocks and then torches all the way up. And then next to the topmost dropper, you will either need a block or a torch. You know, so if it's like this, you just need a block next to that dropper. 
you know the block is being powered by the redstone torch, or if you're up by another one, you simply just need a torch next to the topmost dropper. And that's it. Now, of course, depending on how tall your dropper elevator is, you may need to extend the extender. So be sure to test it. You know, throw in like 10 items just to make sure that 10 items come out. Again, you want the droppers to continue clicking for a second, even after the items have been dispensed. So if the extender isn't extending long enough, all you have to do is break out this block and break out this dust, and then add more comparators going in the same orientation as the original ones that you placed, and then replace the block and replace the dust, and this will extend the extender's duration. And if it still doesn't work, you can always just add more comparators. You could basically add an infinite number of comparators to the extender. But now on to the more precise observer version. The build area is going to be about 3 by 4 and your front-facing observers are going to be over here on this netherite block that is diagonally from the dropper elevator. But then next to the dropper elevator, behind the observer, we're going to need a tower of solid blocks, going all the way up, matching the droppers. So you need solid blocks of your choice next to the droppers, and then we're going to have observers facing away so that the back of the observer is going into those solid blocks. I would probably recommend placing these observers and solid blocks at the same time so that it's easier to place the observers facing the correct direction. And then our input hopper is either going to be on this side or on the back. But then we're going to place a comparator next to the droppers facing away from the machine. Then we're going to turn around and place a repeater diagonally from that comparator with either no additional delay if you want it to be silent or with an additional one tick delay like you see here if you want it at double speed. But then we're going to place two solid blocks and three pieces of dust in these positions, and the circuit is now complete. All that's left is to place a line of observers that are all facing down on top of this redstone dust right here in front of the other observers. So we're going to go all the way up until we reach the tippy top, like so. And now it's done. Again, if you want it to be more silent, just have the repeater have a no additional tick delay. So like, don't poke the repeater at all, and it'll be more precise and more silent. But if you want it at double speed, like I prefer double speed, just poke the repeater one time so it's set to a two tick delay, and that will make it be at double speed. The way this works is that the frontmost observers are noticing when this redstone dust turns on and off. If the repeater has no delay, then basically the observers only notice when the redstone turns on. But if the repeater has a two tick delay, if you poked it one time, the observers will activate when the redstone dust turns on and when the redstone dust turns off. And then the observers behind that will notice them activating and then power the blocks that will then power the droppers. But that's all we got for this video. I really hope you found what you were looking for. As always, if you have any questions or requests, simply let me know and I will do my best to help you out. Or if you have any critiques or suggestions, I would love to hear those as well. I'm always trying to improve my video making skills, so if there's anything that you don't like about the video, just let me know about it and I will try to fix it in the future. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the video, it helps out the channel, and it makes me super happy. And if you don't know what to say, just tell me hi. I would love to hear from you. And a big shout out to all of my subscribers and supporters. It is because of all of you that I can keep making these videos and that the channel keeps on a growing. So I really appreciate all of you. You are all totally awesome. And even if you're not subscribed, I appreciate you being here. Be sure to check out some of my other content. I'm sure there is something that you can find that you enjoy. And if not, let me know what you would like to see and I will do my best to get it done. But until next time, I've been your host, Omelette Du, hopefully teaching you a redstone trick or two, and reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.